in this video we'll show you my favorite weapon against the Spanish opening. Let's get started with two games I played while explaining every single move, and then a short theory recap, everything you need to know. Let's go. Game one. Okay, we have the black pieces against one e4. We protect this pawn with the knight, and now which of the many options is white going to pick? Spanish. Okay, let's play this line. I find I find this a very simple line to play against Spanish because you are developing a piece. And now there is one idea that it works when the opponent is simply going for castle, which is the most natural move. You go with the knight here, and you're offering a trade of knights. And you're attacking the bishop, so if they take the pawn, you win a piece. <laughs> Just be careful. Now you take with the bishop, and usually they try to play c3 and d4, winning a tempo on this bishop. If not, you will play c6, d6, develop your knight, develop your bishop, and you get a nice position. Now, the bishop is attacked, so we don't go here. If not, we give another tempo. We go all the way back so that after d4, we can make a move on our own. Now, we will win a tempo on this bishop. So basically, we are playing very, uh, very similar, very symmetrical. But we will have a nice knight here. Instead, our opponent doesn't have any more than knight. Now, they go all the way back there. It's a little bit a passive uh, choice. I would play the move d6, just protecting this pawn. After the trade and the trade of queens, we take back with the bishop, so we don't even destroy the possibility of castling. And this position is roughly equal. Now, once you know how to develop your... Uh, first of all, getting an equal position with the black pieces is a great achievement, because usually white has an extra move, so you can be happy when you get an equal position. Um, how do we go on? We have to try to, first of all, bring out all the pieces and try to castle, and then to sort to make a plan. In this position, we'll be very educational how to make a good plan, because we have a symmetrical position. Okay, they are not taking the queen, and I'm very happy about it, because I'm an attacking player. I will just develop the knight with tempo attacking this pawn. How to defend this pawn? Um, that's not a way. It was not so easy. Queen there was the only move, probably. I now just take, right? I have to be careful because, okay, if I take, my king is not yet castled. But there is no way to exploit that. There is not even a check, you know? Queen there is not possible. And I'm attacking this little bishop. Okay, my opponent is not playing good moves. So I will simply castle and wait for them to play something. Because if they go with the knight there, this bishop is hanging. It's a free cheese macaroni. Uh, also, this is uh, a target, maybe one day. Okay, queen there. Now, there is this under attack, but I could play simply this move. I like it. I really like this, because I can take there, and the queen would be under attack, so it could be very powerful. We have to make sure that it works, but I believe it could be really powerful. Okay, bishop there. Now we can consider taking. If they take with the rook, we take first here, and then we win the rook, so we are completely winning. If they take here then we have some discovery checks but maybe it's not so powerful maybe it's not so powerful uh, not powerful enough because this that and what do we do i was thinking about a knight check here the king moves and then i go with the queen but there is simply bishop takes and it's not such a big deal okay let's play queen here that's a very fun move we are attacking this pawn a third time bing boom bomb and we're also threatening some very annoying things. Okay, they are taking there, trading our knight. And that's sad because we don't have the possibility. G3 would have been a big mistake because we can simply take there. And after this, we take and attention because this is pinned. So probably we are just completely winning there. I will show you in the analysis. So here we take with the bishop attacking the queen and the attack is going on. The show must go on. Yeah. If the queen doesn't go there, we're probably completely winning. For example, queen's... Okay, queen there. It's good. But we will play rook here, pinning the bishop. If we can play queen g4, we are nearly giving mate. This pawn cannot be pushed because this is pinned. And if this pawn is pushed, then we sneak with the queen and give mate there. That's why the queen on d1 is so powerful. But now, how to make another move? How to go on? If I can play two moves, I will play rook here. Rook there. Slide the rook to the attack and give mate. This is an example of how strong the bishop pair can be. Those bishops are controlling all these squares on these very powerful diagonals where exactly the king is. And now, for example, you see already a bit the combination of all the threats. I'm winning a rook, attacking this little rook behind. 
And we take there, we could also not take there. We are not in a hurry. So I will bring the rook to the attack. Because the rook is trapped there, cannot be moved. There is no way to, to escape. For now, at least. If the queen is moved, then the rook has... Get some squares. But for now, the rook is trapped. Mm-hmm. Okay. There is a pawn that is captured, but now that's a mistake because I'm taking here. And oh no, my rook. Oh no, my poor rook. Please don't take my rook. <laughs> because I'm taking there and giving weight. So that would be terrible. And if the move g3 is played, saying like, okay, I win a tempo on the queen, and then this rook is really hanging, after g3 there is queen here. And then I'm giving I'm giving checkmate on g2. And it is. This was a really nice game. I played really good. But in this position, I missed something. Queen h4 is a good move, but not the best one. Because here, there would have been a nice tactic. And it's... Bang. Knight take d2. I'm attacking also the rook, right? So after bishop takes, we can just take this rook and be very happy. I mean, there is a check there, but doesn't really... Doesn't really matter. Uh, here... Uh, here we have at least an exchange op, meaning a rook uh, for a piece, but here there is even the move g6 trapping this uh, piece. So that would be really, really bad. And is there any other option for, for white here? Well, if they just take back, we take back a piece and we are also winning. Okay, queen g4, queen h4. I wanted to show you what happens after this move. There is knight takes. And after pawn takes, we take with the queen, giving a check. This pawn is pinned. So cannot take. And after this, now we have to be give the right checks. But I think there is a very simple, simple, simple way to win. And there's check here, king there, and bishop there. Now, I don't know if the engine is uh, laughing at me, probably. <laughs> because it's just 4.5. Uh, oh, yeah, of course, there is a very easier way, simpler way, to give a check somewhere and then to take this bishop. Of course, and then you go back there. This is also a win a piece. It's, it's better. Let's go on with a new game. Now we have the black pieces. And we also play e45. I think this is the opening that you need to master when you start playing chess. Now the knight is attacking the pawn, so we protect it with our knight. Now let's see what move white can play here. They can play so many moves. Bishop here, bishop there, d4, knight there. And they go for the Spanish. This is the main line. Okay, I will play a sideline which is bishop c5, but I like. I'm developing the pieces immediately. Uh, okay, they take. So the idea of the Spanish is that they are attacking the piece that is protecting the pawn. But as you can see, this pawn now can be left hanging because if they take, we would go with the queen again here and we have again the double threat, the knight and the checkmate and also this pawn. Now they castled, so this pawn now needs to be protected and I will protect it with the pawn. Now listen, you have to be really careful about such moves like f6. And in general, I will tell you never play such moves. In this case, I'm confident that this sacrifice would not be working because uh, basically here white, before playing this move, had the possibility to sacrifice the knight. And after pawn takes to slide the queen here, I'm, they are giving a check. And if I push this pawn on g6 to interfere with the check, the queen will take this pawn and then give a check and the rook is also attacked. It's hard to imagine, but this is a very uh, strong, powerful tactic. But after the check on h5, my king could have moved on f8 or on d7. So I should have still an extra piece. Anyway, now I will just develop my knight. So that after this tactic, queen h5, I can simply play knight g6. I'm protecting everything. My knight is protecting there and I have no problem anymore. Okay, so now... We have a normal position. We have to discuss this position. So I have a weakness, two double pawns. This is not good in general. Now those two pawns and weakness, weaknesses are just those can, can, that can be exploited. I will develop all my pieces and look at this. And these pawns cannot really be attacked at the moment, right? Okay, the bishop is now under attack, so we have to make a decision. Do we keep the pin here? Or do we go back on this diagonal? And as I have a very natural way to retreat my bishop, I will go there. Because even if the move g4 is played, I can simply go back here and my bishop is alright. So let's keep the pin because the pin is always annoying. If the queen moves away, we can snap the knight and then all the pawns on the king's side are weak. Okay, so my opponent is attacking this bishop. We could simply move back here. Be careful! 
every time you have a bishop there and it's attacked by a pawn, if you go here and the pawn goes there, you might have your bishop trapped. Now, I would still have the square here, but it's not always the, the case. So be very careful about keeping some squares for this bishop. I was talking about some general consideration. Now, my opponent is pushing the pawns. Remember, pawns are never going backwards. In fact, I consider those moves nearly a mistake, especially the move g4, because you're pushing the pawn in front of your king, and now your king is going to be very weak. I will go with the bishop here and not there, because I want to keep the square for the knight that might jump forward here. Also, I might consider to play the move h5, because I'm opening up everything, every file on the king. And then I need to find a way to join with my queen. Okay, my opponent is trying to run here. I see they want to keep control over the squares. Now, I'm thinking already that moves like this, if something could work, or queen here, because this knight is unprotected and this rook is unprotected. And when there are unprotected pieces, this is like, this is like a bell ringing, you know? There might be some tactic. But in this situation, I think this is not the case. This is another unprotected piece, piece by the way. I might just play the move h5, keep going for my plan, but then this would be hanging. I could also play the move g6 to avoid this knight from getting there. Actually, knight h5 is... knight h4 is a good move. Okay, I will play king here because after the knight goes there, I might want to play the move g6, attacking the knight. And now I can do it without having to be worried about this check. So even if the knight goes there, I can simply move my bishop. And honestly, it's not a big deal. Maybe I will play even the move f5 at some point, open up everything, and then try to attack against this king. I still could do some general consideration about this position, because after this trade at move... Uh, let's go shortly back here. At move 4, I have two double pawns, and as compensation, I have the bishop pair. My opponent has given away a bishop in an open position, so that's why this position is considered quite balanced. Okay, so they took here, so we just take back. This is basically a forced move, and now we might keep going with the move f5. Mm, I think we will keep going with the move f5, but before that we will play bishop here, just slightly improving the bishop, looking already at the queen with the rook, and f5 is incoming, we are opening up everything. Okay, now the question is, do we go on the g file or on the f file? I think we will go here, and the point is that the rook can no longer go there as soon as this bishop is there, and ideally I want to have a rook on the f and the rook on the g file. If I would go with this rook on the g file, I cannot bring this rook on the f file. Instead, now I keep this rook on the f file and then I will bring this rook on the g file. I'm going to play f5. If these files are going to be opened, well, my rook is immediately looking at the king and the other rook is immediately looking, looking at the queen. This is very bad for my opponent. Okay, they are just making a move that makes basically no sense. I will prepare my threat. So that is really strong. I mean, pushing this pawn brings to really few. Now they are threatening this move, so be careful. Generally, when your bishop is going to be trapped, a useful move could be to, play, to push this pawn. One or two steps, depending on the position. In this position, two steps would be risky, because after pawn takes this, this pawn is potentially hanging. It's true that you're also attacking the knight, but whatever. Pushing one is the safe approach, but honestly, don't make a move just for the sake of it. After pawn pushes, I can go with the bishop still to this square. So I'm not in a hurry and I want to open up everything. So now it's the moment to crush the opponent, to deliver a strong attack. Usually it's good to open up files when you have all your pieces ready. And I don't have any other piece to bring to the party. This bishop is actually participating because he's pinning this pawn. So potentially I could give a check here and the piece there cannot be captured. Also... Uh, this rook is ready, this rook is ready, this bishop is ready, and the queen is also ready to join the party. So all my pieces are ready. When you have such positions where you cannot really improve your pieces, it means that it's time to strike. And now we take back. This pawn is pinned. We are threatening to take, and I'm expecting to move g5 to try to shut down, to close. But I have no intention to close. Here I could go with the move, bang, sorry, bang, sacrificing a pawn. I could also just push this. Yeah, I could also play bishop here. I have so many moves. I could also sacrifice my rook. And I'm thinking about it. The problem is that the, the king can go there. So not really at the moment. Okay, I will play bishop here. 
I'm attacking this knight, and the point is that I want to improve my bishop to this square without being traded, attacking the queen. So I'm expecting knight here, and then I will play bishop there. And then the queen has to move, and then I might be able to play some move with temple. Oh, I'm very confused about this move. Uh-huh. Is attacking nothing. Every time your opponent makes a move, make sure, guys, don't go forward with your plan. Because imagine this move would threatening something strong. You would miss that. In this case, I don't think they're threatening anything. Because g6, I just take with the rook. Bishop moves, I just take it. Thank you very much. And this rook is not hanging. And the queen cannot go really anywhere. So I just take a free knight, which is another free cheese macaroni. We get into the pocket. Now we take yours. Thank you so much. I mean, you're just helping us to attack. <laughs> that's what is happening right now okay now we also give a check like this with the bishop and now we push i want to bring this bishop to give a check or the queen to give a check it is nearly mate all right so they are trying to bring some forces to the defense but i think i simply have this check and then i can take there i mean why not if you can win a piece this is a double check sorry it's not a double check it's a double attack or double threat, whatever you want to call it. I'm giving a check, and I'm also attacking one more time this bishop. So with my next move, I'm going to take here. Before doing all this tactic, I had to make sure that this rook is protected, because after I take, the queen could take there, but the bishop is protecting, so you have to make sure of that, and that there is no checkmate whatsoever on this file, because the rook is leaving the g file, but the pieces are not well coordinated and so like just three signs. Short and crispy, this is what you have to know if you also want to play this line. White can play here, three moves, bishop takes, castle and c3. If they go with the move castle, you will avoid their typical plan. They want to play c3 and d4. You will change everything and play the move knight d4. You're attacking this bishop and if they go with uh, the free pawn, taking the free pawn, you already win a piece. The best move in this position is to trade the knight. You take back with the bishop and now they will 100% play the move c3. Attacking your bishop, you go all the way back and they will play the move d4. Now, if you take, you will be in trouble because they have a very strong center. So after d4, you have to remember if you move c3. Now the bishop can go back there or there. If they go here, I will show you first this. Uh, after d6, I won so many blitz games because my opponent took here, took here, and then I thought this was a tactic winning the queen. But they forgot that the queen is protected by the bishop, so this tactic in this variation doesn't work. In this position, anyway, how you're going to develop your pieces, very simple. The knight here, then you castle short. And for white, it's not so simple to protect this pawn and this pawn at the same time. Because, for example, if they play knight here, this pawn is already hanging. You can take it. And if they first develop the bishop, you go with the knight there and now you're attacking also this pawn. Now still, knight 2 is possible, but at this point they cannot move any more those two pieces if not one of these two pawns will be hanging. You will keep going with very simple moves like castle, bishop e6 or bishop g4 and you have a good position. If they take your knight, this is a bit the idea of the Spanish, they are attacking the piece that is protecting this pawn. After pawn takes, they cannot take here because you have the move queen d4. You're attacking this knight, this uh, pawn, and this checkmate at the same time. So you win back all the material. If they castle instead, how do you develop all your pieces? Now you have a pawn that you need to protect. So you play the move f6. Here, be careful. There is sometimes, if you know the Damiano defense is with f6, here there is this very strong tactic. Sacrifice the knight to give this check. And if g6, you take this pawn and you're winning a rook. This position might look similar, but this tactic does not work because after pawn takes queen check, you're not going to play g6 losing a rook, but you play just king f8. The king has the square because the bishop is already developed. After the queen takes a pawn, you are a piece up. You just play queen d6, offering the queen trade. If white is refusing, there is one more thing that you have to avoid in this position. is to play knight f6 because this would be a fork. So you just develop this knight through uh, h6. And then you will go to f7, bishop here. You bring the rook to the center. And you need to try to somehow do an artificial castle. For example, a very smart way could be to play h6 to go with the king here, and then to bring the rook to the center, and you will have all your pieces developed. Don't forget your piece up. Last variation, what if white goes directly for the plan of playing the move d4? 
here you develop a knight, you are attacking this pawn. Now, if they play the move d4, you're going to take, they take back, and now an important check on b4. Now, it doesn't matter how they protect, you're going to take this pawn next. For example, bishop here, you don't trade, but you first take this pawn because it's free. After this move, that, remember that here, in nearly all the cases, you have to try to play the move d5. Now, you might say, wait, but what after queen e2? I cannot play the move d5 because this is pinned, but here you have a very strong move. You can just castle, and if they take, you go with the rook and you win the queen. So after queen e2 and castle, they have to simply go with the move castle. And now you will be able to play moves like d5, uh, sorry, yeah, d5, uh, bishop here, bring the knight back to the game, and you will have a great position. Hope you guys enjoyed my secret recipe, not so secret anymore against the Spanish. If yes, remember to like and subscribe, and see you guys next time. Oh, wait, wait, check out this video. Bye.